everyone, I'm Princess Link, and welcome back to Metal Gear Solid 4. <sighs> Chapter 2. After flight clearance was granted by the local Air Force, Nomad touched down at El Dorado. Sunny pressed the button to lower the hatch. The thinness of the outside air startled her. The air was thin. El Dorado International Airport was over 8,000 feet above sea level, an elevation high enough for air pressure to significant, significantly affect the boiling point of water. I wondered if that would affect the taste of her eggs. Could it possibly be for the worse? You might have inferred this already because air traffic control is being performed by the military, but the El Dorado Airport was jointly a civilian and military airport. The Air Force was in full presence with old C-130s scattered everywhere. America had probably sold them off decades ago. I think those are Prim C transport craft, Campbell said from the screen. Emblazoned on the sides of the planes was Puv Armament's ominous logo. Eight tentacles poking out of the eyes, nose, and mouth of a skull. Puve being French for octopus. I'd heard that people in southern France sometimes eat octopus, but whoever designed this that fearsome image couldn't have been a fan of the dish. Octopus is delicious. <laughs> so is squid, bitch. No, love squid and octopus. Anything with tentacles. <laughs> As Snake performed one last inspection of his gear, Campbell decided to use the time to introduce Snake to his psychological counselor for the mission. He called her over next to his desk to get her in the video feed. She was young and attractive with straight black hair. This is Rosemary, he said. Snake and I looked at each other at the same time, but not just in reaction to her beauty. This young woman had been Jack's lover, and during the Big Shell incident had carried his child. Rose would later tell me how Jack returned from the Big Shell, unable to put away his memories as a child soldier. He'd get drunk, and some nights he returned covered in injuries. Eventually, she had a miscarriage, and he disappeared. Which, like... Just imagine freaking faking a miscarriage, like, which is like an awful thing to experience. And then you're just like, oh yeah, I had a miscarriage. And you're just like lying about it. Like, no, it's like freaking Stillman and his pretending to lose a leg. Like, just stop, stop. Oh my God, stop. Do not pretend to be disabled. <laughs> Do not pretend you are disabled <laughs> when you're not. Um, when I first learned of that, I had trouble accepting it. How could that have happened? For a brief moment, for, for a brief moment, I even thought, why couldn't she have come to snake with me? But I knew that neither of us could really have done anything for her. But when her face appeared on the screen inside the cargo bay, I was suddenly reminded of something else I'd heard. I looked at Snake. He seemed to simultaneously come to the same realization, and it wasn't a pleasant one. Colonel, Snake said. The one you married, the one that Meryl was talking about. It was Rosemary, yes. Didn't I tell you before? Snake and I sighed in unison. What were you thinking? Snake asked. She's young enough to be her daughter. Campbell's resp response was only more depressing. Yeah, lucky me, huh? I mean, real ass, real old ass dudes will marry, like, s girls young enough to be their daughter. And it's freaking weird. Oh, somebody on Tumblr said that <laughs> Leo DiCaprio was a borderline pedophile just because he's, like, 50 and he dates girls who are, like, in their 20s. Which, like, yeah, that's weird but that doesn't make him a borderline pedophile 
<laughs> like, no, do not just, you can't just throw around that word. You cannot just throw around and just call people borderline pedophiles for, um, like, dating girls 20 years younger than them, as long as they are adults, as, as long as they're, like, over 21, I'm gonna say, because anything under that is freaking weird, man, I'm sorry. Like, I, yeah, I know technically you're an adult at 18, but I'm 18, and I do not want to date some freaking 32-year-old. Or anyone, anyone older than, like, 20. It's, it just feels way too weird right now, honestly. Like, no, no thank you. Yeah. Um. <laughs> yes, I will never shut up about how effed up Snake Merrill is. He is 32 and she is 18. I do not like it. Anyway. Um. I nearly laughed at the absurdity. Snake, disgusted, said, No, I see why Meryl won't have anything to do with you. Meryl said something about me? The flippant tone had left the colonel's voice replaced by deep pain. But neither Snake nor I were in the mood to feel sorry for her. <laughs> Snake flatly replied, yeah, I believe you. Her words were, I'll never forgive that womanizing piece of shit. I see. With none of us having any desire to linger on the aggravating and bizarre revelation, we instead sought refuge in our various battle preparations. I just... <laughs> I couldn't make a fine joke, but I'm not gonna... Just kidding, now I've got freaking a swift of wind stuck in my head. Yay. I tested Snake's Octo Camo and, Octo -camo and calibrated the power assist on his sneaking suit. Then I ran the Mark II system tests and went through Nomad's inspection checklist to prepare for our eventual departure. When the time came for Snake to leave, St Sunny stood at the edge of the cargo bay, waved goodbye, and called out, S See you, Snake! Snake returned a smile. He would be gone for at least several days, several days without having to endure her fried eggs. I looked at Sunny, watching Snake at, reach the edge of the tarmac, and I thought, we're something like a family, aren't we? We weren't really a family, of course, but at that moment, I felt at peace. If only everything could have stayed like that. I shook my head. What was I thinking at a time like this? Snake was about to enter another battlefield. Using an ID Camp Bell had provided, Snake passed through customs and immigration. He climbed in the 4x4 and headed up into the mountainous region on the other side of the border. Just a few years ago, the high altitude wouldn't have been a problem for Snake, but now with his aged lungs, Snake was having trouble adjusting to the low oxygen. Fortunately, he'd have time to adjust. The mountains were quite far. But as the elevation increased, Snake only seemed to become worse off. He rarely smoke, spoke, and the occasional bead of sweat rolled down his cheek. Snake, I asked over the Kodak, how are you holding up? Snake, as reluctant as ever to discuss his body, simply asked. <laughs> uh, what's our current situation? I sighed. Rebel guerrilla units are advancing on the base of the government PMC troops. The, day, the building appears to be Liquid's safe house. According to Naomi's data, she's being held prisoner inside the compound. I sent a satellite image of the compound through the solid eye. And that's where she is? Yes. Assuming Naomi's data are correct, according to satellite imagery procured by Mei Ling, the facility where Naomi's being held is to your north. To the north, along a mountain road. I'm sending the location to your map. Snake hadn't heard that name in a while. Maylene. Yeah. Along with Colonel Campbell, Maylene was part of Snake's wireless support team during the Shadow Moses incident. Back then, she was still a teenager, but now, nine years had passed and she was a grown woman. 
She'd become the captain of the USS Missouri, a battleship from the time when giant turrets were still the backbone of naval power. Missouri had a long and storied history, including serving as the setting for a Steven Seagull movie. But with the advent, advent of carrier fleets, the expensive and inflexible battleship class vessels became obsolete. <clears throat> Although cannon power attacks on, a, on coastal areas remained in, in sporadic use through the Cold War, Missouri was retired as an aged soldier, no longer of use to the modern era, in the following year, 92. The rest of the battleships would meet the same fate by the mid-90s. Now the seas were dominated by frigate-class ships and cruisers powered by the mighty e Aegis system. <laughs> Just jump. <laughs> Mr. into a boat like they're gonna power the boat just shove no just shove Malos into a boat and make him it's what he deserves <laughs> anyway wait after its decommissioning Missouri was sent to Hawaii to live out the rest of its years as a tourist attraction but after its museum contract expired the ship was recommissioned and used for virtual training Rather than actual combat training, the goal seemed to be getting the sailors acclimated to seamen, seamanship. <laughs> I'm sorry, aboard aboard an analog vessel. In short, everyone involved with the Shadow Moses incident had either become fugitives or had been sidelined side into non-essential dead end appointments. I mean, that makes more sense. Like, in Metal Gear Solid, Mei Ling was talking about how she, like, wanted to join the Air Force, but she didn't want to kill people, so she wanted to just take pictures of this stuff, and then, but then there wasn't anyone who would just take pictures of it, so then, <laughs> and then suddenly she's, like, in the Navy or whatever, and I'm like, what is happening? What? I thought you didn't join the military because you didn't want to hurt you didn't want to kill people. I'm like, what is happening now? Anyway, that makes more sense. It's, um, you gotta... When is that combo? I think it's, like, right after, um, you meet Hal. So... Either that or... Sometime after that. It's definitely after you meet Hal. <laughs> anyway... Wait. The same had happened to Meryl. She was wasting away in some desk job when Camp Bell pulled her, pulled some connections in the army to place her within the PMC inspection unit. An assignment considered extremely dangerous even for the CID. I know it's supposed to be Campbell, but I don't care. It's Camp Bell. It's Camp Bell. Shut up. Um, gotta come. Snake said, I just saw a PMC. I'm a jerk. I think I'm not fine for government patrols. I even saw some giant billboard advertisements for them. I'm see the octopus signs for your boy. That might sound appealing if you were desperate, but in the fog of war, even eight aren't sign enough. When Spider-Man was next drawings. Remember that? I mean, I didn't read the comics, but that was a thing that happened at one point. Peter grew like four extra arms or something. Anyway, that's not relevant at all. Even some nonsense name like Octopus Armaments takes on an elegantly feminine quality when said in French. Pre I Stop! I don't- I can't say French words. I don't know French. Okay, I took Mandarin and learned, like, nothing because I did not study. <laughs> and I also took Latin for one- no, for half a year because then COVID happened. So, yeah. 
Wait. Uh, I don't really know where I was going with this. But, um, Puve Armament. Personally, I found all this ebullience over the booming oil economy distasteful. I confirmed Snake's positional data on the GPS and then said, You'd better ditch your car. That area is a veritable hornet's nest of PMC patrols. Snake voiced his acknowledgement. He left the 4x4 hidden in a thicket of trees and lowered the mic too from his back. Just a little. <laughs> I'm sorry. He adjusted the octo camo and took slow. Wait. Slow, even breaths to. Uh, condition his breathing to the thin atmosphere. He studied his environment and attuned his senses and his intuition to the South American highlands. The smell of the grass. The smell of bugs. <laughs> the smell of the end. Have you been sm What do bugs smell like? First of all, what do bugs smell like? Second of all, how do you know what they smell like? Have you been going around sniffing bugs? Anyway, <laughs> crawling on the ground, the smells were unavoidable. And to Snake, they were an essential component of his senses. When others were or had recently been nearby, they left ripples in what Snake liked to think of as a baseline. The... I'm sorry, are you saying he's a doggy? <laughs> like, what? Why are you talking about, talking about smells and then freaking... The fires in the earth were a delicate system within which Snake could pick out the traces of human disturbance. By attuning his senses to the ripples in the baseline, his situational awareness surpassed what most would consider possible. Are you saying he is a doggy? <laughs> Even with some of its his Even with some of his attention dedicated to keeping track of PMC forces, Snake soon reached the path. Nestled in a dell at its mouth was a village with several houses, a barn, and a PMC armored truck. The battlefield had arrived ahead of Snake. Defeated rebel soldiers were gathered together on their knees. A number of battle sky co corpses were scattered around the village, all of them anti-government forces. The rebels had no uniforms and carried mismatched <laughs> sets of whatever equipment they were able to scavenge or improvise. <laughs> the PMC soldiers, of course, were combat chest harnesses and protect helmets. Their, equ their equipment on par with that of the U.S. Army. Flames spewed from one of the houses. Likely, this village had been a rebel hideout. By blurring the line between the battlefield and civilian life, guerrillas could evade the attacks of conventional armies. The guerrilla warfare tactics employed in the mountains of South America owed much to Mao Zedong, a mountainous expanse covering much of China's territory, and in farming villages in those high highlands, Mao had made his stronghold. He knew that ur urbanized forces would not be suited to the steep regions. South America, with a similar share of mountains and villages, had a lot in common with China. At one with the, at one with the fires. <laughs> Just like laying on the ground, like, go away, Hal. At one with the fires now. <laughs> go away, I'm one with the fires. <laughs> um, Snake observed the BMCs through his solid eye. A figure emerged from the flaming house. The man was noticeably taller than the PMC soldiers and he wore a long black coat, utterly out of place in a battlefield. <laughs> and he wore a long- wait, I read that. Snake recognized him. The man was one of the monsters of the rebel unit, Dead Cell, whom we thought had been shot to death by Raiden on the big shell. But death never seemed to take for him, as he could be stabbed in the chest or thought, shot through the head and laugh it off. The man's teeth had once been in Snake's throat. <laughs> Oh my god. And Snake could still remember how his eyes had looked. Bottomless, black, lifeless, like a vampire. It's Vamp! 
Snake said, and when I heard the words, time stood still. Bam. The heartbreak of seeing his knife stick into my sister's stomach had haunted me for years. How much better would it have been if had the knife been pointed at me instead? How many times have Emma's last words echoed inside me just as I was about to fall asleep? All I could do every night was grit my teeth and clutch at the bed sheets and endure the memory of her feeble lips forming the words, Call me Emma. Reliving that moment reduced me to tears every time. That man, that Nosferatu, <laughs> killed Emma. Got a con! It's just like, he's not that ugly. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> go back to when I saw the room was a horror movie. Because Tommy Wiseau looks like a freaking vampire. <laughs> he look. I'm convinced he's a vampire. You cannot convince me Tommy Wiseau is not a vampire. I'm absolutely convinced he's a vampire. He's from, he has an accent that nobody can identify, really. He refuses to say where he's from, which is so weird. He might be Polish though, actually. And even all of the outdoor scenes in the room aren't actually filmed outside. They just use green screens for some reason. Like, what are you doing? Just go outside. It's not that high. Anyway, I snapped back to the mission. Snake must have been calling my name over the codec for some time. I put my hand to my chest and try, tried to calm my has, hastened pulse and breathing. No easy task with that man on the other side of the monitor, on the other side of Snake's solid eye. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> King Valley's ultimate eye. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I said. He could be involved with Liquid's plans. Vamp had been working in concert with Ocelot on the big show. It's possible, but I thought Jack took him out in Manhattan. I bit my lip. Was Vamp really immortal? Maybe I should have felt afraid or incredulous at the possibility of facing an enemy who couldn't die, but all I could feel was the anger, the rising anger for the man who killed my sister. I tried to fight it back, but my racing heart sent blood straight to my head. My temples started to ache from the intensity of my emotions. I swear, the next time I see him, Otacon, get a grip! Snake's shouting broke me free from the magnetic draw of my hatred. For the moment, at least, I was thinking straight again. The burning anger had subsided into an icy black river. I said to Snake, let's see what the PMC troops are up to. Snake acknowledged and moved to where he could hear their voices, from which we gathered the Pruva armament soldiers were searching for Snake's whereabouts. The soldiers reported to Vamp that Snake hadn't been in the village. Vamp's skin was whiter than it had been on the big shell, and veins stood out on his cheek like neural pathways. The gorillas have scattered, Pam said to the man, his voice low and smooth, straight out of a nightmare. But they'll be coming to storm the safe house. He must be among their numbers. Sooner or later, he will come. Don't let your guide down. I'm not doing this fucking accent. Film on my though, bitch. Yes. Anyway. <laughs> no, he was in... said it before, but he was in, he voiced John Stewart, the Superior Green Lantern. F off, Harold. Harold. <laughs> and freaking Alan. And in the um, early 2000s Justice League cartoon. Love John Stewart. Best Green Lantern. 10 out of 10, best green lantern. I love you. <laughs> anyway. The PMC troops saluted, <laughs> and Pam climbed into the armored truck and left the smoldering village behind. Somehow they knew Snake was coming. This could be a trap, I said. Yeah, we'll need to stay sharp. <laughs> if, you like, if you like this, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys 
next time. Bye!